I'm Louise and I work for the RFN support team and I've um, talked to quite a lot of you before, especially if you've got an enterprise on RFN. And um, as well as doing support last year, I worked for a small business and I worked over Christmas. So I kind of know some of the things that might be going through your head or might ha happen in the next couple of months. So these slides are sort of some practical and logistical things that um, might happen and might help you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that um, the slides will be available online afterwards. And so I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of how to do step by steps with the platform right now, because that probably bore half of you to death. Um, but you, the, there is the links in the slides for you to find out how to do these things. So um, don't worry about that. So the things I thought of um, covering were adding some sparkle to your branding, uh, which Kay mentioned before. Uh, planning your order cycles or when your shop front's going to be open, optimising your products, Christmas gifts, and then a few other extra logistical tips. So Kay mentioned this, but um, especially on social media and on your shop front, you might want to just add a little Christmas touch to your logo or your banner. Um, I know that quite a lot of people up, um, add like a festive snowflake or a Christmas tree or something to their logo, and then they might change their photo banner to some Christmassy image over the period. Um, you can make this sort of the same on all platforms. So put the same banner, the same imaging on your Twitter and your Facebook and your Instagram, and then also on your FN shop front. Um, if you've not done this before, um, you can go to Facebook and you can do update your pitch profile and then add a frame. And they have some nice Christmas ones and they have more variety nearer the time too. Of course, you might want to create something of your own and um, there's much more flexibility with this. So you can look at Canva, which is a really nice online free software tool, which you can use. For thinking about your banner imaging, you might um, take a nice photo of some festive products that you sell. But if you don't have time to do that or it's just not there now um, because you haven't made your mince pies or whatever yet, then you can always look online and there's lots of free stock images and this, a Pixabay is a good source of one of them. Next thing is like planning your order cycles. Now, I'm aware that maybe not all of you um, are on the OFM platform and don't know what I mean by an order cycle because I think order cycle is fairly OFM jargon, as it were. Um, what we mean is that um, the buy an order cycle is the the period of time which your shop front is open for a customer to place um, an order. There's two ways which um, businesses use the OFM platform primarily. One of them is to have periodic order cycles. So uh, they might have the shop front open Monday to Wednesday, and then uh, uh, customers collect all their produce on a Saturday. It allows um, the, between Wednesday and Saturday, between the order cycle closing and the uh, customer collecting, it allows your bakers and makers and pickers and growers to get all their lovely fresh produce readily made, especially for the customer. The other way uh, which you can operate is sort of more traditionally, I guess, which is to have a continuously open shop front um, and then just say that if a customer places an order today, then they come and collect it, um, their order tomorrow or two days time, or your order will be posted out to them within a certain time period. Thinking about these two scenarios, um, in the coming months. I mean, it's really good to plan now if you haven't done already, um, because not just you want to plan, but you'll probably find your customers will want to plan. So considering the first scenario of having like periodic um, order cycles. Now this this week, uh, this year, um, Christmas day is on a Friday. So if you not, your normal day of collection is on a Saturday or Sunday, can you fit in an extra collection date um, in that Christmas week, maybe the 23rd or the 24th? Because um, especially for fresh produce, people want it as close to Christmas as possible. I know um, it, well, you, when you're coming up to December, it might be a good idea to open all your order cycles um, in, in sort of at the start of December. So your customers have a choice of when they want to collect. Certainly my mum will want to order her turkey and her um, vegetables at sort of early in December, but she won't want to collect it that week. She'll want to collect it much nearer the time. So just think like your customer, what, how can you make it easier for them? And then again, what, uh, do you know whether you're going to be open for have um, collection 
between Christmas and New Year. Let your customers know. You can add a notice to your shopfront um, notices page, as well as your social media and any newsletter that you send out. Because not only does this sort of um, allow, well, it's good communication to your customers to provide in general loyalty, but it also means that if you are going to be shut, the customers might want to order an extra, I don't know, bottle of milk before Christmas because they need a bit more. The next scenario, or the other scenario, is a shopfront which has a continuously continuously open. For this, um, remember that nearer Christmas, you're probably going to find you get a much vast increase in order demand. And can you um, can you manage this order demand? So, if your normal turnaround time is one day between a customer ordering and them coming to collect, can you still manage this if you get 100 orders in a day? So, be realistic and maybe. Um, say you need to collect two days after ordering instead. The other th point which is in association with this is um, how close to Christmas can a customer order and still get their products for Christmas? Because believe it or not, when I work for an online business, people still order on Christmas Eve or and expect it for Christmas Day, which it really isn't. Um, you really can't do it unless you're superhuman. So therefore, shut your order cycle that day or two before Christmas, just to allow yourself time and not engender customer disappointment. Again, if you're going to um, post items out nationally rather than have people collect, then consider the cutoff dates for postage, um, which is the 18th and the 21st of December, and then add your last date for ordering maybe a day or two before this because you don't want to turn up on the 18th of um, December for second class delivery and realize that you've got 300 things to pack before noon to get it to the post office you won't be able to do that thinking about your products especially this year when um, customers were all advised to stay at home as much as possible and sort of limit our social contact. People want to get as much as they can in one shop and not have to visit lots of different places to collect their different items. So how can you diversify your product range to allow your customers to do this? This is a good time to just talk to people locally to see what they can offer you. Can they offer you some Christmas wreaths or some um, Christmas trees or some gift items? Or even can you get them, get a local, um, local supplier to give you um, to supply you with toilet roll or to add to your product range with household items so that the customer doesn't have to visit multiple outlets. Last week, we saw the addition of photos on mobiles for um, shopping on the OFM platform. And there's also the platform has had a bit of a revamp. So it all looks really nice and shiny and we're really excited about it. So if you're adding photos to your products that are going on your platform, uh, on your shop front try and crop them to one to one to one square dimensions or one to one because this will work best and if you don't have a, a the actual product in front of you to take a photo of then you can look online for stock images like i mentioned before you want to make your products as easy as possible for the customer to find them and buy them so make sure that all of your products um christmas products have the product pro property Christmas added to them. So you can use the, the custom can use the filter bar on the right of the screen to find them. Similarly, edit your products that have uh, some Christmas overtone and make sure that you've added Christmas as the search word to the product. So that if the customer uses the search box at the top of your shop, they find them. Another point, and we mentioned this in a webinar a couple of weeks ago, so I won't dwell on it here, but you can find information in the slides um, within the link in the slide, is you wanna um, just review your product descriptions because your product description is what will convince that um, the customer who's umming and ahhing, shall I, shan't I buy this product, to put it in their basket and actually check out because that's the point where you can sell how wonderful your product is. Thinking of gift items, Gift items might be simple items that you have on your shop front every, every week anyway, because like what is a lovely jar of honey, that could be a super gift or a bar of chocolate. But you might also have um, want to add to your range specifically for gifts like winter wreaths or flower arrangements or um, local homeware, uh, handcrafted homeware or knitwear, etc. 
Another lovely gift that you could put together is a hamper. So you might want to um, approach a couple of your suppliers and see if they can um, group together and organize a hamper. Hampers take a little bit of time to organize and they can be a bit tricky maybe to sort out how, who gets paid what at the end, but they are really, really worthwhile. It's a kind of marketing thing for your hub because say if person A buys a, um, the hamper and gives it to person B, and if person A shops your hub anyway, they're a loyal customer, but person B might not have ever shopped at your hub, but they receive this wonderful hamper and then they think, oh, I might have a look at that hub, um, at that outlet after Christmas. And then you've in increased your customers. If you're thinking of, of people wanting to buy things as gifts, people will buy things as gifts earlier than their shop for their Christmas day food. So expect sort of a gift surge or gift demands to increase sort of mid-December and then Christmas Day food much closer to Christmas Day. This year, a nice touch might be to offer to be able to deliver the uh, gifts to the recipient, um, especially for elderly or vulnerable customers. Have a think with your team. Can you do this? Um, is it what there are barriers to doing this? Could you offer national shipping when you don't normally, just for this one-off? Um, if you don't normally offer national shipping and you've not got something set up, considering checking out Drop Point, the UFN ha um, has a relationship with them. So social enterprises on our platform can get reduced cost um, delivery. Can you offer gift wrapping as a service? Um, can you add a, a little message with gifts, um, which can be customizable? Vouchers and gift subscriptions, I think um, there's been a trend towards these type of things in general, I think over the last couple of years, certainly I get them for my Christmas presents more and more these days. Um, I actually think gift subscriptions this year will be a really big thing because um, if you offer a gift subscription, especially with it using the OFM platform, the person buying the gift can then spread the cost of that gift over the coming month or months. So they, they're paying a small amount for their friend or family to get a loaf of bread or um, some freshly, fresh um, vegetable box every week for say two, week, uh, two months, whatever they, de you, they decide. And they don't have to pay for all of this upfront, which is especially um, important this year when people have cash flow problems with the economic times. Now, this is my brainstorm of other things you might want to think of so um some christmas products like christmas cakes they take months to make and um probably people who are making Chris christmas cakes have already started long ago making the cake and then feeding it with alcohol and then not icing etc so you might not open an order cycle with these items now and get advance payments and advance orders because it's not something that can be made at, um, like in december it's always better to sell out of something than to have set um, your stock levels to infinite and then have to disappoint customers and have to decide who gets what because you've oversold. So look at your stock levels and if you're not sure, set it to a reasonable level, don't put it as infinite. Similarly, consider how many deliveries you can realistically make. You were, we are all human and there are only 24 hours in the day in that last week. If it is 100 and shut your order cycle when you've got that 100 order, don't take more orders because you're just, um, you won't be able to fulfill them necessarily. Don't neglect your everyday products. Everyone wants milk, bread, um, toilet roll, soap, etc. So make sure you can offer these as well as seasonal produce. If you're going to think do national postage, especially if you don't normally do it, think about getting your um, packaging because that's something you need to get now. And as Kay mentioned before, um, this is your period to sort of attract your customers to make them remember you after Christmas as well. So you might want to run a little social media campaign to say, look, if you spend X now, we can um, you can get a little bit of a discount after Christmas. And the steps to how to implement this in the slides, which we'll share with you. Um, sort of to engender um, customer goodwill and also 
because we are who we are, it's always good to look at for those who are less well advantaged in your com local community. What can you do? Can you like spread a bit of this Christmas cheer to someone? Um, donate leftover food produce to a homeless shelter or um, a food bank. And also don't forget your staff and volunteers. They're gonna be like run off their feet maybe in these coming months. Maybe just give them that little bit of a reward. That was really interesting. I just, I know that I was, there's so many angles that I hadn't thought about. So um, thanks for saving me. But uh, there's a few questions and uh, I would suggest we go through them before going to Nick so that it kind of goes uh, sort of like if someone else has any questions, it's all contained within the same aspect. So the first question is, is it possible to add a Christmas category on OFN rather than just have it as a property? I'm repeating. No, at the moment we can't add to product categories. You can add it as a product property though. And the, the search thing on the side um, is the same. So it does mean that you can have, um, every product can only have one belong to one category. So a Christmas cake, you really want it to be in the product category of bread and baking, but then you can add as many properties as you want. So your Christmas cake will have the property of Christmas, but it might, if it's special, it might be a vegan cake. It might be a gluten-free cake. It might be produced within 15 miles. So you can add as many of these as, as you want. Super. There's a very practical question from Alistair and it's when do people start adding Christmas pictures to their shop front? Um, were you talking about um, sort of like your logo and your Christmas banner um, or were you talking about Christmas products? Because, um, and I suppose for either really it's um, what it's personal choice. It's like, it's a similar question of when do you put up your Christmas tree? I know people who will put up their Christmas tree in September if they could, and others that will put it up right before. I think, um, I don't wanna say either way because it, it'd be my personal opinion. Um, I don't know, this year, well, yeah, maybe so because we're all a bit miserable, put it up earlier, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it was just a question because I, I get a bit grumpy when I see um, Christmas <laughs> decorations in shops. But I know I'm not. You, I may not be normal. So I was just wondering when other what when do other people is now about the right time to start? Do you think? Um, Would you I like a view from the Tamar? Yes, please. Um, so we came up with a plan this week to drip feed our new Christmas products. So every week we're going to have something new for people to pre-order or to think about. Or um, so this week, this week in our newsletter, it will be a pre-order opportunity for Christmas poultry and um, gammons. Then next week we're going to have so start you know, talking about gifts like our hampers and we're getting some um, calendars from Land Workers Alliance. Um, so starting to talk about gifty things. And then every week as we go through, you know, Christmas cakes, then mince pies, then. So it's a bit of, of a drip feed here in the Tamar. That's a really good idea. Um, finally, uh, can you can you order can an order cycle be more than a month? Yes, certainly can. Yeah, good to know. And then a really nice comment from Candance and Pantry who are saying that they've had great feedback about the new shop. So well done. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Sally has a really uh, a very specific questions there. How do you limit your customer numbers? Is there something? some way to do it on your on the on the platform do you mean how many orders you got for a particular cycle um order cycle well i suppose you could imagine sally do you want to yeah just how many cut you know say because for us we'd say well we would probably cut off at about 80 customers and i haven't ever done that before because we've never got to that level so how do I say, you know, the 80th, you know, the 79th person or whatever would be the last person that can order? You wouldn't, you can't set a limit, um, an automatic limit. You'd have to keep an eye on it if you thought that you were going to get close to that. 
and then you can go to the um, orders page on your OFN admin and just um, sort by order cycle and you can because you can view sort of like uh, 10 or 15 orders per page you can see how many pages you've got but for that order cycle to count how many orders so you could do it that way lovely um, yeah no that's fine so we just keep an eye and um, can i just go back to the previous question because when i also asked about the christmas button and i don't really understand what the product property is compared to the category where do i find that is that just on a link somewhere um yeah there's a link in the slides um and also if you go to the um user guide and search for product properties it will tell you how to get into Thank that you. um i think that's the quickest way to tell you now without yep. giving you Thank a screenshot you. that's fine cheers 